Okay, so welcome to this uh, second part of an ongoing series of tutorials about the Juno smart contract uh, platform. Um, as with part one, uh, I'll quickly answer the question, what is Juno? Juno is a smart contract hub within the Cosmos ecosystem. It's due to go live sometime in July when Cosmosm, the underlying module that supports smart contracts in Juno, uh, hits version 1.0.0. .0 .0. And uh, from the get-go, it's going to be IBC enabled, um, all of that good stuff. And crucially, there is a competition, if you like, it's quite friendly, people are helping each other out, called Hack Juno, going on at the moment, um, where 1% of the total supply of Juno um, is, is going to be given out to uh, teams or individuals uh, that build useful um, contracts and uh, tooling around contracts for the community to use. Uh, if you'd like more information about that, you can go to github.com forward slash hack hyphen Juno. And uh, in addition, there's a bunch of uh, examples uh, of things that people have suggested already that might be useful and things that the multi-sig committee have suggested as well on there, if you're short on ideas. So, uh, what is this tutorial about? This tutorial is, in our previous one, we made a meme coin using the Cosmos and Examples um, repository. This is working, uh, this sort of picks up from there and works with um, production grade contracts rather than the ones that are designed for sort of new programmers in the space to just sort of learn the ropes. Uh, the, if you look at the code in Cosmwism Plus, you'll find that it adheres much more closely to the best practices that Confio, the creators of uh, Cosmwism, uh, suggest for writing smart contracts. And so, although we're not going to dig into the code too deeply in this, this is a, a relatively short um a short video where we're mainly going to be focusing on getting one deployed and uh, interacting with it. Uh, you'll see if you look at the code base between Cosmwasm examples and Cosmwasm Plus that the, the style's relatively uh, different. So uh, we're going to be looking at the CW1 um, sub keys example links in the description and additionally links to the commands that we're going to be using this will be on docs.junochain.com again link in the description. If you have any problems, come find us on Discord, link in the description. And of course, I'll put a link in the description to Hack Juno as well. I think that deals with all of the housekeeping, so let's get into it. But before we start, final thing, uh, just wanna give a big thanks to Orkin from, um, uh, from Confio, because uh, while writing the, the materials for this, um, I was working quite late and uh, Got in a little bit of uh, got got in a little bit of a muddle with two of the the commands in the API that had changed and was using the wrong key and a variety of things that were definitely user error on my part. Very 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 understanding, cool dude. Uh, just let me talk through my problem and was like spotted it for you, man. Um, so yeah, thanks, Orkin. Final thing you're going to need before we start is to install and prep the box. As before, not going to go into it too deeply. Um, more information is available on docs.junodchain.com. Crucially, Juno D and Rust are what you kind of need. Uh, if you can do uh, which Juno and get something, and if you can do cargo version, so Rust is there, you're, you're definitely gonna be okay. I've already prepped all of that stuff because this is a um, this is the box that's running the faucet for the test net. The current test net is Lucina. Um, so I don't need to uh, go and do all of those steps. So. As with the meme coin contract, we're essentially going to be going through the same steps, right? We're going to be building a contract, storing a contract, initializing a contract, and executing the contract. Like last time, we will be assigning some coins, uh, in this case, allowing a proxying, another key to use some coins, um, and then we're going to send them. And like last time, rather than writing our own contract, uh, we are going to do what uh, many of the greatest cyclists have done throughout the last 30 years in the Tour de France, and we're gonna cheat. So uh, that's where Cosmosm Plus comes in, because we're gonna just pinch a contract straight out of there. Okay, so like before, let's descend into the directory that we've put aside for our contract work on this box. Uh, it would help if I actually use the correct command, wouldn't it? Um, so we see the examples repo that we uh, we got via Git last time. Um, this time I'm just going to grab uh, the archive directly via wget, but you can uh, use Git if you prefer. 
Um, okay, happy days. Uh, we're going to use the 0.62 tag. Um, yeah, feel free to use Git if you prefer. That's uh, all here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, so let's move that back out of the way. Fantastic. So um, if we go into our newly minted repo, whose name I've already forgotten, Cosmos Plus. <laughs> uh, God, I'm not on it today, am I? Um, okay. So the structure of this one's quite different. And so the, we're going to use a similar uh, step that, to what we did last time, where um, we're going to use a, uh, a Docker container provided um, by Confio Cosmosm team um, to optimize our code, to reduce the gas usage of the contracts. Uh, and we're going to use a slightly different command because we're just going to build all of the contracts in this um, repository into one archive uh, folder. So here's one I made earlier. I keep saying that. It's a Blue Peter thing. Uh, if you... Uh, oh, and always pays to be pseudo, doesn't it? Now, this is gonna take a little while. I'm not gonna to lie to you. Okay, and we're done. So the third part of this video series, we're actually gonna go into using the, the templates provided around this stuff to, to build a contract out, um, albeit with, with a little bit of skipping to keep the, um, to keep the video length down. But for now, we, as I said uh, before, we just want to look, uh, we just want to use the CW1 um, sub keys. So the CW1 uh, contract itself is just about whitelisting um, admin accounts uh, that can uh, do things, uh, right? So it's just uh, about sort of like permissioning a contract, if you like. And CW1 sub keys uh, sort of extends that with a few examples uh, of just a sort of an ERC20 like token uh, that you can uh, shuffle around. If you want more information on that, um, look in the README for the uh, Cosmism Plus uh, contract, the uh, the CW1 uh, subkeys contract. There's a README.md in that folder, which will sort of describe the differences between them. Uh, we can see there's a variety in there. The one we want is CW1 subkeys. And as before, we're going to use the uh, the same uh, Juno D TX Wasm store, and then CW1. Mm, and it's going to auto complete. It's going to auto complete for us. Come on, come on. There we go. Uh, CW1, and yeah, and then of course we're going to provide a key, a chain ID, and specify gas. There we go. And as before, um, the important thing to note is the code ID. We're going to need that later. Okay, so we just cleared uh, the terminal again so we can see what's going on. We know the code ID is, uh, is 18, um, but we need to initialize it now so that we can work with it. Sorry, instantiate. It always, I always say initialize rather than instantiate. Every time, okay, pro tip, whenever I say initialize, imagine I said instantiate. So again, we're going to use uh, node um, to help us out with this one and happen to know the shape of the um, instantiate call, which is this. And so again, bef as before, if you want to know what arguments something takes, you can go and look in the folder for the contract and find the schema files. So there's a folder called schema and you'll see JSON schemas for each uh, argument um, that it takes for like instantiation or execution or whatever. Um, and that will uh, help you work out what the correct arguments should be for that contract for whatever instruction you're trying to um, go with. So um, in this case, we are going to be instantiating contract 18. Okay, so again, instantiate call, JSON encoded arguments, uh, an amount, um, which is the amount that you send the contract. So the crucial thing about the CW1 contract is we can allocate um, values to a key, uh, essentially from our balance that then can be moved around, shuffled, whatever. Um, the 
thing to note is that's native tokens only. So in this case, you do know. And if you're working as the admin key, you actually can't interact. Um, look in the documentation to see why that is. But essentially, as the admin key, we can assign permissions and we can allocate amounts. And then those keys can actually send them or whatever. Um, but as the admin key, we can't do anything unless we emit those values and then it will be subtracted from the amount here that we've specified. And then uh, so there's our contract address for this CW1 contract. Right. So what we now want to do is we want to allocate a balance to a key that's not our key. Um, so there are several keys on this box. The one that we just used to instantiate the admin um, is the key that the testnet validator on this box is using, right? Which was uh, this address, okay? So we, we need another address that we want to work with. We want to permission it some tokens from the key I just posted, right? Um, and just because it's, it's sort of uh, known to me, um, we're going to use the faucets key, which is this one. Uh, well, that's you know, the pub key of the, the batch 32 of the, of the faucet. So what we need to do is work out whether that has, uh, uh, we need to give that an allowance. Um, so if we look uh, using the contract state uh, smart query, we can find out whether it has an allowance already. And we can see that it, it doesn't have one. Okay, there's some useful other commands we can do on this contract. So for example, we can find out what other admins are present, or if any. Um, so you can see uh, just that first key that we, we listed. Um, that's the self-delegate key. And then we can see what allowances are there, which at the moment there's none. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an allowance. Um, so again, let's jump back over to Node. So we've just uh, we've just encoded those arguments, and then we're going to do that here. So we're going to use this increase allowance um, uh, uh, instruction, which we're going to pass to the txwasm execute command, like we did previously in the previous tutorial. Uh, and you can see that we've encoded the rest of it. Um, the only other thing to bear in mind is just to make sure that, especially if you manipulate JSON manually rather than using a uh, node or something, if you omit these, um, uh, that argument usually goes in, a, it, well, it gets parsed as a string. So if you omit the rabbit ears, sometimes it doesn't get parsed right. Um, so just if, you, if it throws a, a JSON encoding error, uh, the first thing to just check is um, uh, balances like that one are, are kind of encoded as you would expect in JSON, um, but that's an aside. So let's do that. And then if we look back at all allowances, we will now see that the faucet key here uh, has an allowance of whatever that is, two Juno. Okay, so now we're going to send some of that to another key, right? So um, if we look at this key here, it's got 500 U Juno, not very much, okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is send U Juno from the, the faucets key via this contract, via that allowance, um, to this key. And then we're going to see both the allowance uh, go down and then the balance of that key go up, okay. Um, so let's encode, encode our arguments again. So we jump back over here, do the execute command again. So again, same uh, same contract, uh, and then this quite convoluted message, which is delegating to the underlying um, Cosmos SDK bank uh, module. And crucially here, you can see this is now, we, we, we're executing this as the faucet key, right? Because the, the key that is used has to be the same key that we've just assigned an allowance to, right? So in that first one, as the admin key, which was called Needlecast, we uh, assigned an allowance um, to this key here. This key here is uh, its kind of use name on this system, if you like, is Faucet Lucina. So 
that wouldn't have been able to execute this contract without that allowance being set, if you get what I mean. Okay, so now we're going to do that. We're going to broadcast it. It should work okay, it looks like it. And then if we look at the bank balances, we'll just copy and paste this one again. Um, we can now see it's got a thousand huge units. That's come from um, the contract that we just ran, right? Uh, and then if we look at all the allowances again, we can see that it's decreased by 500, right? So this is how we're able to sort of delegate that amount and then that amount sort of sort of be used. Um, that, in, in a nutshell, that's how uh, the CW1 subkeys example works. Um, it's sort of showing you how uh, one um, sort of admin account can execute, can give the permission for other uh, for other users in the system, represented in this case by a wallet or a key, um, permissions to do other things. And this will become incredibly powerful when we start working with CW20. Um, but that's enough for this video. Uh, this just shows you sort of the basics of how you can work with Cosmosm Plus and, and how all of that fits together. Like I say, examples, code, uh, stuff you can follow along with, docs.tunochain.com. And uh, if you like this, if you feel inspired by it, then please do get involved with Hack Juno. 1% um, of uh, supply up for grabs for things that are useful to the, con uh, to the community. Uh, go check that out. Additionally, if you have any uh, feedback, anything you'd like to see, please drop a link in the description or come and join the discussion on Discord. Again, link in the description. Plenty of helpful people uh, that can uh, talk to you about your project and your ideas for, for Hack Juno. Uh, and just generally give you more information if you're interested in that. And that's about it, really. So, uh, yeah, party on.